Why did I look at touring cars? Because I didn't have any money. Up to the grid comes Jason Plato. Plato leads the way. The man of the moment, the man of the hour. Jason knows every trick in the book. One thing we can guarantee, this is going to be a great race. I guess 94 was when I decided, right, I need to forget this dream of Formula 1, it's not going to happen. And was almost pushed into it by Renault UK. You know, they said, look, come and do this. And they convinced me did it to do it, predominantly because there was a test with Wick Williams that, you know, for the Wick, the winner. After winning the seat with Williams Renault for 1997, he made an immediate impression. It was a monumental step from where I'd been. He got the first three pole positions. Um, which I was not too pleased about. The whole Williams thing was a, 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 a roller coaster of brilliant feelings. If I'm really honest, he was not my type of, uh, of guy. He was just too, uh, too cocky and uh, in your face. But he was very quick, straight away. He has grown and matured into a, into a very good driver, obviously. They were brilliant times because, you know, I learned my craft there and, you know, I'm deeply indebted to Alan, actually. I learned an enormous amount from that man. The first championship victory came in 2001. The Vauxhall was the dominant car that year, so it was a straight fight, but a very contentious fight between Plato and teammate Muller. It was not a good time, you know, the, the team was split down the middle. There was quite a lot of politics going on. Whilst I'm, I was pleased with my performance that year, was it enjoyable? Oh, it wasn't. At the start of the Vauxhall days with him and Ivan and whatnot, you know, these were two blokes that were going at it hammer and tongs. We did have some brilliant bat battles and actually the fight that year, you know, Ivan was a bit quicker than me going into the midsummer break. I had a good long hard look at everything over the midsummer break and then come back at Snetterton and bang, I was back on the pace and then I then took over. So, you know, the fight throughout the year was, you know, nip and tuck. And it was, you know, the racing was, Pretty aggressive, hard stuff. The pair slugged it out right down to the final round. Rather than elation, yes, we won the championship. It was it's quite an aggressive feeling. A few years have gone past now, and of course I look back at it, it's still it's a, it's a win. The best man won. <laughs> it was nine years before he'd lift the trophy again, this time driving for Chevrolet. It's a brilliant year that year. We didn't make any mistakes. You know, I was totally in tune with my engineer. The car was superb. The team did a brilliant job. And it just was a textbook championship win. People perhaps won't believe this, but it's just fact. You know, I've never had number one status in the team. Never. Never. But you kind of, you kind of, you kind of earn it and people believe it. Plato may hold the record for his 94 race wins, but has that come at a cost? He's finished second in the championship five times in the last 10 years. The way I'm programmed, I go for a win if a win's on, rather than playing the percentages. You know, I'm not a second's good enough. You know, if it's on, I want to have a win. And without a doubt, that's cost me championships over the years. He's always focused on trying to win races, which is why he's won more than anybody else. So, you know, he knows how to do it. He knows how to do the job, and he'll tell you that. Bless him. What's more important is the fact that, you know, I've got like 220 podiums, so nearly half of the events I've competed in, I've been on the podium. Now that stat is more important to me, and the fact that every single year I've been competitive. 2015 brought what some saw as a surprise move from manufacturer MG to the fledgling VMR. Three, four months with the team, it became apparent that actually, look, we could do something really quite exciting here. The first ever British Touring Car Championship win for Subaru is claimed by Colin Turkington. Of course, I, you know, I wanted to win, to be, you know, the first wit winner for Subaru. But it didn't really matter as much as I thought it was going to. So it's 500 up, and how many more to go? I still feel fit and strong, you know, I don't suffer in the car, you know, I'm still quick enough. I still enjoy it, and I think once it gets to the point where that changes, then I might think I've had enough, but it gets me excited. I love it. There might be another 500, there might be another 100 though.